So friends, we are in Memphis at the corner of Chelsea and Thomas Street and something extraordinary happened right here. And it doesn't look like a place that anything extraordinary would happen. In fact, where it happened at is now a family dollar store. And I will even go as far as to say, when I'm standing on this sidewalk right here, I would actually be inside of the studio where it stood because it was almost on the street. I'll show you some pictures of it and the edge of it was really close to the street. There wasn't very much sidewalk left. And it was called American Sound Studios. And I'm going to read this to you. American Studios, a cornerstone of the explosive Memphis music market in the 1960s, stood on this site. Opened in 62, American featured record producer Chip Moman and the musicians known as the 827 Thomas Street Band, later the Memphis Boys. They worked with scores of artists such as Elvis, the Box Tops, King Curtis, Neil Diamond, Wilson Pickett, Dusty Springfield, Joe Tex, B.J. Thomas, and Bobby Womack. During its heyday, American produced 15 top 10 hits on the Billboard Top 100 chart. Overall, more than 120 American recordings reached not only the pop charts, but also those for rhythm and blues, country, and even jazz. American closed in 1972 with the loss of its last big label contract with Atlantic Records and with Moman's decision to relocate to Atlanta. But American Sound Studios, friends, was right here. And I'm gonna cross the street so we can get a better vantage point, but it all happened right here. So let me tell you some of the songs that were recorded here. One of the things, one of the big things that was recorded here was Elvis recorded four huge songs that were game changers. So, So he used Chip Moman and his band to record these things. And these are huge songs that you know. Suspicious Minds was recorded here. In the Ghetto was recorded here. Daddy Don't Cry was recorded here. And lastly, oh, one of my favorite songs, Kentucky Rain. Kentucky Rain keeps pouring down. And up ahead another stand there. created a family dollar store. Thomas and Chelsea Avenue. So I'm gonna cross the street so we can get a better vantage point of the way this, the uh, studio looked way back then. Looks like there's no cars coming so I can cross now. But I'm not gonna hold my phone up right now. I'm gonna wait until these cars are gone in fact. But this is not far from Lauderdale, Humes High School. I think all those are relatively close. So that's where it was right there, friends. I'm gonna show you some pictures of it on this corner right here so you can imagine what it looked like. Let's see if that fire hydrant is in this picture. Stay tuned. So the answer is that fire hydrant is not in the picture, but that telephone pole right there is. And you can see that the arrow has changed. It used to encourage you to turn right right here. Now it's telling you to go straight, which I assume is a little bigger road. But the fire hydrant was not there at the time. It, but I could see around the fire hydrant too that that is new concrete. But that right there is where it's at. You can even see that pole in the picture right there, friends. It all happened right here. In fact, just to the right of where the historical marker is, is about where the corner of the studio was right at the concrete. 
So we'll back, walk back over and take a look. Yeah, all this concrete is new. So based on the picture, the edge of the studio was right about here. That was the edge of it. And you see there's not very much concrete in there. But this is where it happened at, American Sound Studios, friends. Now let me also give you a little more history here. There's another couple of very important songs that were recorded here that are not Elvis related, but they're still, you know them. B.J. Thomas recorded Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head here. Dusty Springfield, Son of a Preacher Man. The Box Tops, Cry Like a Baby. And one of my personal favorites, because my daughter, I named her after this song, the Elvis version, Neil Diamond cut Sweet Caroline here, friends. That's right, you heard me. Neil Diamond cut Sweet Caroline right here at American Sound Studios. And Elvis did some major changes, major, major changes. Kentucky Rain, <clears throat> Don't Cry Daddy, and uh, I don't, I'm having trouble remembering. You know the other song. Oh, In the Ghetto. Right here, friends. So friends, some spectacular things happened here at American Sound Studios, as I mentioned. And this was a turning point for Elvis's career. He had finally finished the 68 comeback, which was sponsored by Singer. And he only had one more movie left to do, and that was The Change of Habit with Mary Tyler Moore. And after this session, he went back and uh, finished that movie. That was the last movie that he was contracted to do. But he had decided to go a different way. And the story goes that they were sitting in the jungle room, him and uh, Felton Jarvis and Marty Lacker. And Felton was talking about different ways of uh, recording. And this is actually Elvis and Felton at American Sound Studios. And it was uh, Elvis. The And let me tell you a couple of things about Felton. Felton actually produced Fats Domino and Gladys Knight. And some oddities with Felton, he kept a boa constrictor and a burlap bag in his office all the time. That was kind of a pet of his. But Elvis had heard about Chip Moman and the things that they were producing, and he wanted to do something completely different. And the issue before then had been that the colonel was controlling everything, and this is uh, Chip Moman with Elvis at American Sound Studios. But the colonel was controlling all of the songs. If they didn't have... Uh, publishing on the songs, things like that, where they controlled the money, they would turn the songs down. And Elvis had decided that this was the time that they were no longer going to turn songs down and they were going to move forward and he was going to record things whether they had publishing on it or not. And that's how these sessions all came about. And uh, Lamar was in on it. The Colonel was not. And this is Lamar and the Colonel and Elvis at American Sound Studios but they realized that they had kind of lost control of Elvis at this moment. And he had gone in there and, and started recording these things without the Colonel involved, without his hand in it, kind of on his own with uh, a proven hit maker, Chip Moman. And the other part of this is Neil Diamond was actually scheduled to be here during this time. And they pushed uh, Neil Diamond till after this session and which is when he recorded sweet caroline so they both happened the, the same year 1969 but the first part of the session started uh in january the 13th 1969 and as i mentioned some big songs came out of this but the most important thing that came out was elvis had gotten away from the traditional sound the traditional songs all the things that the colonel had control of he got away from all those things. And like I say, he did Suspicious Minds here. He did In the Ghetto. He did um, Mama Like the Roses. He did uh, Rubber Neckin', which was a great song, Kentucky Rain. Um, and Kentucky Rain, incidentally, let me tell you a story about Kentucky Rain. Kentucky Rain was written by somebody you know, Eddie Rabbit and Dick Hurd. And it was Lamar Fike's idea to cut that song, and there was some pushback on it, but he ended up getting it done, and it turned out to be a home run. It was a, a very important song and, and turned out to be a great song. 
and Lamar Fike is credited with, with finding that song and getting Elvis to record it. And another thing that happened is this was the first time since the Sun Sessions, and you heard me, since the Sun Sessions that Elvis recorded in Memphis. All other stuff was in Los Angeles and Nashville up to this point. And Elvis kind of just impromptu decided, he yes, I'm going to go record there, and he went, and the rest is history, friends. You know the songs. So just an amazing time. Neil Diamond got pushed uh, out of his space where he recorded uh, Sweet Caroline a little later that year, and Elvis created a lot of monumental songs. And the people that played on the records, uh, a famous guitar player Reggie Young, uh, Gene Chrisman played drums, Bobby Emmons played organ, Ed Collis played harmonica, Mike Leach played guitar and bass, Tommy Cogbill played bass, Bobby Wood piano, Charlie Hodge background vocals, John Hughley steel guitar, and then Janine, Jenny Green, Donna Thacker, Ginger Holiday, Mary Holiday, and Susan Pilkington are all the backup singers. And here's a few of those girls with Elvis right here. And this was during the sessions that were going on. So I wanted to mention that Elvis had just turned 34 and he would be dead less than eight years later or right at eight years later. And so that's something to consider right here. Looks very, very healthy right here in this picture in the studio. But you know what happens, friends. So I wanted to mention that Bill Ballou met with Elvis June 11th, 1968, which was about six months before these sessions, just a, a hair over it. And he created this uh, black leather suit that you see in the 68 comeback. But it was not long after that that he created the famous jumpsuit look that you're familiar with. But the jumpsuits were after this session. So when this session happened, there was no jumpsuits that we know of Elvis today. That iconic look that Elvis had with the jumpsuits did not exist at this time. Just another little tidbit to think about, friends. And one last little thing. You've heard me talk about Otis Blackwell before. Otis wrote Don't Be Cruel and all kinds of other Elvis hits as well as other things for other people. And this is Otis at American Sound Studios. And he was superstitious that if he ever met Elvis, he would lose his writing mojo. So he never met Elvis in person. Can you imagine actually writing songs for Elvis and having the ability to meet him, but not doing it with intent? Well, that's what Otis Blackwell did, friends. I wonder what that's all about. That thing's forked up. When I was right, friends, I just punched Humes in, and you can see 7, 1031, 1028. Humes is uh, half a mile from here, or four tenths. But thanks for watching, friends, and tighten up.